Eyes of the Buddha, a play for radio by Victor Pemberton with David Spencer and John Westbrook. Eyes of the Buddha. Joyersinger. My name's Paul de Vries. The Salon High Commissioner's Office gave me the address. They told me to come to number 21. Oh, then you'd better come in, hadn't you? And close that door, please. You're wasting the central heating. <laughs> it's the only joy of living in London in the middle of winter. It's the only luxury I can afford. <laughs> and so useful not to need a clock. I beg your pardon? Uh, living so close to Big Ben. Oh! oh, you cheeky young rascal. You're exactly the same as your father. My father? <laughs> then you know me? Of course I know you. You're George de Vries's son, Paul. Oh, yeah. The last time I saw you, you were a gangling child of seven. And so ugly. Oh, <laughs> such a pity good looks don't run in your family. <laughs> 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 mm, I'd know that smell anywhere. Ah, you like curry and rice, do you? Of course. Hot curry and rice. I was born in Salon too, remember? Good, good. Then you can peel some more onions for me. <laughs> yes, Mrs. Jarsinger. Oh, and do stop calling me by that ridiculous name. When you were a child, you always called me Jaya. Come, in here. If you want some drink, you'll find a bottle of beer in, in that cupboard. It may be a bit stale. Uh, what about the onions? Oh, I do them myself. The kitchen's only big enough for a dwarf. <laughs> <laughs> it's so strange meeting you, Jaya. I had no idea you existed. I've lived here for the past 25 years. Do you live alone? Through choice, not necessity. Now... Two husbands are quite enough for any one lifetime. <laughs> I've never seen so many photographs. It's like a museum. Are they your family? Yes, yes, most of them are my family. Is my father amongst them? On the mantelpiece, second from the left. Oh, yes. Do you think I look like him? The eyes, perhaps. Why have you come to see me, Paul? I want to go out to Salon. You mean Sri Lanka? Oh, yes, I was forgetting. Uh -huh. I can't get used to the new name. Well, why do you want to go? Uh, to find out about my family. Well, I haven't seen them since I left over 20 years ago. I thought maybe you could help me. Oh. But I don't even know if they're alive or dead. You've made no contact with them. Nor they with me. I feel like a tree without roots. Oh, then you think yourself lucky. Oh, at least you have no responsibilities to worry about. Yes, but I can't live my life like that, knowing there are shadows in the corner. Will you help me? I must go and look at my curry. Jaya, I have to go back to Salon. My father needs me. What are you saying? Your father is dead. Is he, Jaya? He died two years ago. Did no one ever tell you? Oh, a solicitor wrote to say that my father had died of a heart attack. When I tried to find out more information, there was never any reply. Yes, but sure. Do dead men them. write letters, Jaya? Letters? I think you'd better look at these. What are they? Letters addressed to me, written and posted in Salon during the past few weeks, from my father. <sighs> well, but it is not possible. George de Vries has been dead for... Over two years. That is my father's handwriting, Joy. I've compared it to the postcards he used to send me when I was a child. It's identical. Well, then it's someone playing a stupid joke on you. But why? And why do every one of these letters beg me to go back home to Salon as soon as possible? Don't do that, Paul. Now, you promise me you are never going back to Salon. Why not? I was born there, wasn't it? I? It wouldn't be good for you. Things are different now. It might be dangerous. Dangerous? Oh, okay. You young rascal, England is your home now. Your whole life is here. No, Jaya. I can't continue my life until I know how it began. I must know what this is all about. Please, 
Sit down. Oh, well. Tell me about the family, Jaya. Let's see now. There's Grandfather de Vries, Aunt Lilla, Uncle Harry, my cousins. Are they all still alive? Yes, as far as I know. Have you their address? Paul, I will not be responsible. I have to make contact with them. You would not be welcome. Why not? If you are insisting on going out to Ceylon, then it will not be with my help. Destroy the letters, Paul. They are a cruel joke. Nothing more. It's not just the letters, Jaya. It's something that's been happening to me over the past few weeks. It may sound ridiculous to you, but I'm being plagued by bad dreams. Oh, dreams. Dreams. Now what are you talking about, Paul? I hear my father calling out to me. And yet I haven't seen him since I was seven. Uh, until I saw that photograph just now, I didn't even remember what he looked like. And yet, I can hear his voice quite distinctly. Jaya, I'm being haunted by memories from the past. I see a large house in Colombo. I smell lumpries cooking in Idiapa and sweet jasmine. I hear the squeal of flying foxes at sunset. And I see the family sitting around the huge dining table, staring at me, a small child. But no one speaks. Silence. Staring eyes. Blank faces. And then I'm in the jungle, alone. It's dark, but again there are eyes everywhere, watching me. I can hear threatening movements all around, drawing closer. Wild animals. Elephants, bullfrogs, jackals, a leopard stalking towards me, and snakes. But it's not only that, Jai. It's the sounds I can hear. The drums. Closer, closer, closer. And then, even when I wake up, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that my life is in danger. Paul! <laughs> You're a silly boy. All you are remembering are the drums at the Candy Elephant Festival, the Perahara. <laughs> Your father often took you there when you were a child. No, Jaya, it's more than that. We all have nightmares, Paul. But not the same nightmare every night. I know my father is dead. But somebody wrote those letters to me. And I must know who and why. Kenny, you couldn't be anyone but George's son. I'm sorry, but... The last time I saw you was up at the estate at Palpitia. You were a precocious child of seven, shouting out orders to an elephant. <laughs> Malcolm Warwick, your father was my best friend. Of course, Mr. Warwick, you were my father's business partner. For over 30 years. How good to see you. I can't tell you what it means to me to meet George's son after all these years. Uh, Mr. Warwick... And none of that nonsense. My name is Malcolm. Oh, Malcolm... Are any of my father's family here at the airport? Uh, no, Paul. They asked me to meet you, but uh, they're waiting for you back at the house. Oh, I see. I'm sorry, my boy, but that's the way things are. It's something you'll have to get used to. Never mind. I'll go and fetch the car. Just hang on here for a few moments, Paul. I'll be right back. Right. Mr. DeFries? Hmm? Uh, yes? Mr. Paul de Vries? Yes. Welcome to Sri Lanka. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, look, I'm, I'm awfully sorry, but I'm afraid I don't know who you... Are you a friend of the family? Is there something you want to say to me? Why are you staring at... Uh, hey! Hey, don't go! Come back! Right! Off we go. Uh, Paul, is anything wrong? A man, a Singalese man came up to me. He wanted something. Oh, you'll get used to people begging for money. Well, they don't usually allow that sort of thing at the airport. He knew my name. Come on, let's get out of this place. We'll have to make a dash for the car if you will insist on arriving in the middle of a monsoon. <laughs> The 
But how did he know my name? He may have been one of your father's old servants. George is well known here, you know. And half Salon knows you're arriving. Oh, it was curiosity, if you ask me. Forget about it. Malcolm, why were none of my father's family at the airport to meet me? They haven't seen you for 20 years, Paul. They're just as nervous as you are. Nervous? Your family are not what they used to be. They've withdrawn into their tight little circle where no one can reach them. Your grandfather rules over the household like some deposed monarch. Why? What's happened to them? Oh, they've become frustrated by the changes in the country over the past few years. But surely it must be the same for all colonial families with European origins like ours. Ah, it's not as easy as that, Paul. You see, the estates haven't made a profit for some time now. There's no more money. The family's been forced to live more modestly than it's ever been used to. Even the old house. Yes, even Burley isn't what it used to be. But wasn't my father one of the best planters in Salon? Oh, yes. And yet he died in debt? Yes. Which you paid up, Malcolm. Well, it's all right. The solicitor told me everything in his letter. It was very good of you. Sir, it was the least I could do. After all, your father and I were partners. And there were enemies. Enemies? Paul, what made you decide to come back to Salon? Oh, I suppose you could call it curiosity. Then let me warn you. George de Friese's son will be watched with suspicion wherever he goes. So be careful, Paul. The way things are, it could be dangerous. You're the second person to tell me that. I wonder why. Think no more about it. Ah, there are the gates into Burley now. The family will be waiting to greet you. Oh, yes, and judge you. First impressions can be very important. This is your Aunt Lilla. Hello, Paul. Aunt Lilla. I hardly know what to say. It's so good to be home again. May I kiss you? What? Oh, oh yes. Yes, of course. I um, trust the journey was a good one. Oh, excellent. Thank you. Yes, indeed. Paul, I... I don't suppose you remember your Uncle Harry, do you? So the conquering hero returns. Paul, you young rascal, how have you been? Very well, thank you, Dr. Wilson. Hey, what manners. You see, Lilla, mm -hmm. didn't I tell you they have class in these English schools? Paul, I'm sorry we weren't able to be at the airport to meet you, but, but it's not possible for us to leave the house as much as we'd like to, you understand? Especially after dark. I, I get so nervous, you see. Grandfather is, is not as well as he used to be. He's an elderly gentleman now, needs a great deal of attention. Uh, yes, I understand. Oh, I must say, Burley's a beautiful house. They certainly knew how to build them in the old days. So much feeling and character. Huh? What you really mean is that the place stinks of decay. <laughs> <laughs> Harry, please. The house just needs decoration, that's all. Well, materials are hard to get these days, Paul. Especially paint. There's no cricket at the club until next week. The pitch is underwater. They say the river's up by over two feet. If it doesn't stop raining soon, there'll be floods. Tony, Joanna, come over here and meet your cousin. This is Paul from England. Hello, Tony. Did you bring any decent books with you? Uh, books? You do read, don't you? Even if it is the usual decadent Western stuff. Uh, well, I'm sorry. If, if I'd known, I'd have brought you... Tell me something, Cousin Paul. Have you read any Karl Marx? Do you know anything about the socialist ideal and wealth distribution? Oh, do shut up, Tony. Take no notice of him, Paul. My young brother thinks he knows how to solve all the problems of Ceylon. But in fact, he knows absolutely nothing. <laughs> <laughs> it is nice to see you again after all these years, Paul. I've often thought about you, Joanna. We used to go to Sunday school together, didn't we? Mm -hmm. You wore pigtails. And your face used to be covered in pimples. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Jayasinger tells me my father taught you how to play tennis. Is that right, Joanna? I'm sorry. Did I say something wrong? Joanna, you're dripping wet. You'd better go and change. Yes, Mother. Uh, see you at dinner, Paul. Uh, yes, right. I must be going, too, before the roads become impassable. Thank you for your help, Malcolm. When will I see you again, Malcolm? Well, if you like, sometime tomorrow we could go up to the estate at Palpitia. It's deserted now, but I know the supervisor quite well. Yes, I'd like that very much. Good, I'll call for you. 
Well, good night, everyone. Well, then, I expect you'll want to go up now, Paul. Aunt Lilla, when am I going to see Grandfather? Why, oh, I think perhaps you'd prefer a shower first. This humidity is very uncomfortable. Is Grandfather very ill? No, no, not ill. He's confined to his room in a wheelchair. Oh, then I'll go and see him. Is his room upstairs? No, Paul, you mustn't go up there. Not yet. He wouldn't like it. Wouldn't like it? What Mother is trying to tell you, Cousin Paul, is that you don't just call on Grandfather. He'll send for you when he's good and ready. Come over here by the window, where I can see you. And close that door. I can hardly see you in the dark. I have all the light that is necessary. So, you're my grandson, are you? I'm very happy to be home again, sir. Home? Here? In Salon. Sit down in that chair. The one facing me. Uh, oh. Now, switch on this small lamp on the table beside you. Your hair's too long. Don't they have any decent barber shops in England anymore? Well, it's the fashion in England for young men to wear their hair long, Grandfather. I don't like it. Aunt Lilla tells me you haven't been feeling too well just lately. You will soon learn not to believe everything Lilla tells you. Nor anyone else in this house, for that matter. Much to their disappointment, I shall not be dying just yet. I'm glad to hear it, sir. And I'm too old for flattery, young man. Now, tell me, what made you come back to Ceylon? Well, isn't it natural for a man to want to come back to the place of his birth? A sudden impulse, was it? A burning desire to be reunited with a family you don't even know? Perhaps. I've wanted to do this trip for years, ever since I started to think for myself. Many a time I've looked at the travel posters of Ceylon and imagined I could recognize all the familiar places from my childhood. Just how much of your childhood do you remember? Unfortunately, very little. A few images flash through my mind, images that sometimes disturb me. But I do remember how you and I used to play cards together on the lawn at Palpitio. You were a terrible cheat, you know. Mm. Oh, we were good friends in those days. We seemed to spend a lot of time in each other's company. Your memory would appear to be better than mine. Oh, there are so many things I want to know about to bring back. You will help me, won't you? Do you go to church? Not very often. How often? Oh, special occasions. Weddings, funerals. Catholic? Lapsed. But you still read the Bible, do you? You still believe that there is only one God? The God of righteousness? Uh, look, Grandfather, I'm not an atheist, if that's what you're saying. What sort of work do you do in London? In an architect's office. Architect? Do they pay you well? Do they? <laughs> I enjoy the work. No money here, you know. It hasn't been for years. Your father left only debt. I know that, Grandfather. A solicitor informed me. And if it was money I was after, I'd have come back a long time ago. I've earned my own living without help from anyone, and I shall continue to do so. But it'll never cease to be a mystery to me why no one in the family took the trouble to inform me of my own father's death. If I hadn't been fortunate enough to trace Mrs. Jaya Singer in London, did I would Mrs. never... Did Mrs. Jaya Singer warn you that you might not be welcome in this house? Yes, she did. But I had no reason to believe her. My instructions are... That your father's name should never again be mentioned in this house. May I know why that is, please, Grandfather? You can go now. I'm tired. Why should his name not be mentioned? Did he do something wrong? Your father is dead. Yes, I know that, but why All. Should... By the time your father died two years ago, we had lost nearly every friend he ever had. His own servants despised him, even the workers on his estate. They became his enemies. Remember this. Whilst you are in Salon, your father's enemies are your enemies. Never forget that. Come on, Paul. We've got a lot more to see, yes? Don't you realize that Petra is one of the most famous markets in the whole of Salon, Cause it Give me a chance to take a few photographs, will you? Hey, what are they selling in that store? 
Oh, you mean the aubergines. Aubergines? I've never seen them that size before. The whole market seems to be full of chilies. You can smell the pepper. Hey, tell me. Over there. Is that a Buddhist priest in the southern robes? Where? Oh, no, he's a monk. Because his head shaved? Something like that. He seems terribly young to be a monk, just a teenager. Jag the Minnelli seems to be the Buddhist motto. And the communist one. He's gone. Funny, for one moment I thought he was watching us. Hey, hey, Joanna! Come over here, I want to get a picture of you and Tony in front of the bullock cart. Oh, not on your life. I hate having my picture taken. Oh. I'll see you in a few minutes. I'm going to get some jaggery. Jaggery? What's that? Oh, tell him, Tony. See you. It's very sweet, like brown sugar, filthy stuff. But Joanna never stops eating it. <laughs> your sister's quite a character. It's a very close family, isn't it, Tony? Too close. What do you mean? Don't tell me you haven't noticed the claustrophobia inside that house. Nobody's allowed to do or say anything without grandfather's permission. Whatever happens, nothing is allowed to tarnish the good name of the De Vries Empire. Was it the same with my father, Tony? Your father? You knew him, didn't you? Of course. He lived at Burley until he had the good sense to move up to his own estate. He spent the last few months of his life there. What happened, Tony? What did my father do wrong? They really haven't told you anything, have they? He swindled the books. Swindled? By the time your father died, there was discrepancy of several thousand rupees. Oh, don't blame him, Paul. Blame the system. Was the money ever recovered? Not as far as I know. But I thought Malcolm Warwick cleared up most of the outstanding debts. He did what he could, but there were creditors all over the country. So that's why my father had enemies. That's why somebody forged those letters to me. They wanted me back in Ceylon. Didn't they, Tony? If you really want my advice, treat this visit as a holiday and nothing more. Why, Tony? Look, Paul. Will you be all right on your own for a few moments? Oh, yes. Is anything wrong? No, it's just that I've seen a friend of mine. I want to go and talk to him for a few minutes. Oh. You don't mind, do you? No, of course not. There's plenty to occupy my mind here. I'll see you later, then. Right. <laughs> Master. Hmm? Uh, what do you want? Cross my palm with one rupee and the future shall be yours. Cross your... You mean you're a fortune teller? I see all, Master. The past, present and future. Oh. Give me one rupee. Oh, all right. Here. Thank you, Master. Now, the hands, please. Uh, both of them? Both hands, Master. Pisces. Yes, that's my birth sign. I see water. Clear and cool. Your life, it is clear. I see many things, strange things. You are of Sri Lanka, master. That's right, I was born in Ceylon. But your heart, it is elsewhere, in another country. England, perhaps. Well, that remains to be seen. I see shadows. Cobwebs. Huh? A spider is waiting in the corner. You are struggling to be free. Spiders? Cobwebs? What are you talking the about? The spider is restless. He is waiting to reach you. You must break away, master. The spider begins to move. You must break away. I don't know what you're talking about. I think this has gone far enough. Sound. The planets, they're in position, Master. The doors are opening. I feel tired. Why do I feel so tired? The spider draws closer, Master. Closer. I can't breathe. Closer. I can't breathe. Paul! Paul! Paul, are you all right? Yes, sir. I think so. My head just feels as though it's going to split. What happened? I don't know. He was telling my fortune. Who was telling your fortune? The old man. He was... He's gone. Malcolm, I've never seen so many birds in the sky at one time. And the lorries. <laughs> what are they, giant bats or something? No, they're flying foxes, Paul. You see them all over the island. They sleep in the trees during the day <laughs> until people like you come along and disturb them. <laughs> They're about the only things that haven't deserted the estate. Yes, it's sad. 
Everything overgrown and neglected like this? Mm. Oh, Papitia must have been so beautiful at one time. Oh, you've no idea how beautiful, Paul. It was your father's pride and joy. He loved the place dearly. I'm just grateful he's not here to see it now. It's all much smaller than I remember. Oh, these are only the bungalow gardens. The rubber estate's over there, in that direction. The factory and workers' huts have all been pulled down. That's one of the most staggering views I've ever seen in my life. Malcolm, what's that mountain range over there? Well, that's up country. Candy, the high-grown tea estate. Ah, oh, the air is so fresh and clean. You know, Malcolm, I feel such a part of all this. How I wish I could bring Palpitia back to life all over again. Be careful where you tread, Paul. This estate hasn't been cleared for years. There are still plenty of snakes. Yes, I know. <laughs> this tree. When I was young, my father shot a cobra just above me. Here. Paul. Oh. How on earth... Oh, it is true, Malcolm, I promise you. I know it's true. How could you possibly remember something that happened to you when... when you were only a baby lying asleep in a pram? Oh, I suppose there are some things you never forget. Malcolm, could you bear to take a photograph of me under that tree? Hmm? Of course. Give me the camera. Right. No, no. You'll have to come forward just a little. You're in the shade. Well, Paul, is anything wrong? What are you looking at? Huh? Oh, uh, nothing. I was just thinking how quiet it's become. There are no flying foxes. That sound. What sound? Can't you hear it? I, I've heard it before. In the Petar Market in Colombo this morning. I can't hear anything. Look, am I going to take this picture or aren't I? Uh, I'm sorry, Malcolm. I... Keep still now. Malcolm! Malcolm! Paul, look out! Oh! Paul! Paul, are you all right? Yes, I... I think so. Just my leg, it... It's a bit grazed, that's all. I just don't understand it. This tree was as firm as a rock. No idea it was so dangerous. No, neither did I. But obviously, somebody did. Nobody's lived in the bungalow since your father died. I'm afraid it's just been allowed to go to ruin. The nursery was through that door. Over there, the far end of the bungalow. The servants' quarters were just beyond that. I remember there used to be little wind chimes hanging on the wall just outside my window. You really do have a precise memory, don't you, Paul? Not precise enough, I'm afraid. What was my mother like, Malcolm? <laughs> Charming woman. She captivated your father the first time he ever saw her. Look, she was a great practical joker, rather like your cousin Joanna. Did my father blame me for my mother's death, Malcolm? Is that why he sent me to England? She just didn't know how to cope, that's all. He loved your mother very much, and when her life had to be sacrificed for yours, everything suffered. His work, his... Attitude to everyone around him. Who were his enemies, Malcolm? Enemies? I know about the money he stole. Who told you? It doesn't matter, but I do know how much it cost you all this, and I'm grateful. If ever I had the chance to repay... Your you... father was my friend, Paul. He stole money from the estate because he knew no other way to survive. He was desperate and lonely. Nobody wanted to help him. Perhaps that's why he died. Malcolm, whatever happened to Nihal? My father's old servant. Is he dead? I... I'm not sure. I believe he is dead. Was he here the night my father died? Why do you ask? I just seem to remember Nihal never left my father's side. He was devoted to him. Yes. Yes, he was. I remember playing alone in this room. Sitting by the window, staring out at the lawns of Bourgainvillea Park. Waiting to catch a glimpse of my father as he came back from work. And even when he did, we never seemed to talk with each other. Me howls, my friend. And grandfather. Malcolm, where can I find my father? Find him? I'd like to see his grave. That's all in the past now. Is he in a Colombo cemetery with my mother? I, I'm not sure, Paul. You'll have to ask your family about that. Look, I'm dying of thirst. I'll go and see if I can find the supervisor and rustle up some coconut. Oil. No, Malcolm, wait a minute, please. Come along. 
Keep in the shade, Paul. It's as hot as hell out here. Now come. No Bourgainvillea now. Master Paul. Master Paul, are you in there? Master Paul, why are you staring out of the window? Your father is waiting in the car for you. Come now, little one. It is time for you to go. Why do I have to go to the airport, Niha? But you are going in a great aeroplane. That is something you have always wanted to do. We have often talked of I it. I don't want to go to England. I want to stay here with you. You are going to a fine new school, Master Paul. Will my father come to see me in England, Niha? Of course he will. How do you know? Because your father is my friend. Am I your friend too, Niha? Of course you are, Master Paul. You always have been my friend and always will be. No one can ever separate us. No one. Always remember that. Malcolm, is that... Who are you? What do you want? Master Paul. You. You were at the airport. The man who was staring at me. I am a friend, Master Paul. We are all your friends. All? Oh. We have waited a long time for your return. I have come to offer you the hand of welcome. What is wrong, Master Paul? Is the son of Mr. George de Vries scared to take the hand of one who admired his father? Your hand, it's bleeding. The great tree is thick at the root. The tree? It was you! I have a small gift for you, Master Paul. Here. What is it? A reminder of times past, present, and future. It is our humble way of celebrating your return. Take the box. When you open it, think of us. The planets are good for you today, Master Paul. Oh! Malcolm, in here! Come back here! Come back! Here we are, my boy. Fresh family milk, straight from the coconut. My Paul, what is it? You're as white as a sheet. He was here, that man. Man? The same man who came after me at the airport. He was here, in this room. Where? I don't see anyone. He went out through there, the nursery. Hmm? Well, I'll go and look. He knew my father. They all do. His eyes like that fortune teller at the market this morning. Staring at me. There's no one out there, Paul. His eyes were staring at me. I couldn't think of anything. My mind was totally blank. What have you got in that box, Paul? Hmm? Oh, it's a gift. Give it to me. Where did you get this from? I, I told you there was someone here. Paul, you have no use for a thing like... Let me see. Spider. A dead spider. What does it mean, Malcolm? Not a thing. Not a damn thing. What does thing. it mean, please? There are some people who believe that a dead tarantula is an omen. It's often used in village witchcraft as the symbol of revenge. A black tarantula. So they're at it again, are they? They found a dead tarantula in the bungalow at Palpitia after George's death. Spiked with a shred of bamboo shoot. This one was identical. Oh, Father, we've got to do something. We can't allow the same thing to happen to Paul. We can do nothing. The boy came back here of his own accord. He must face up to the consequences. But, Father, you know what a dead spider means in demon worship. As long as Paul remains in Ceylon, he'll be hounded by witchcraft wherever he goes. If they want that boy, they'll do everything in their power to get him. Well, let's call in the police, Father, before it's too late. There will be no police. But, Father, I said we... there will be no police. No one will drag the name of de Vries any deeper into the mud. What I want are facts. Malcolm, did you see who this man was at the bungalow? No. But what about the dead spider in the box? Perhaps it was there already. 
You think Paul is lying? No. But he may be suffering from hallucinations. What? This is not the first time he's complained of being approached by this man. He insists the same thing happened at the airport soon after he arrived from London, but I saw nothing of it. Could be one of George's workers from the estate. There was plenty of corruption amongst that lot. The Lord punishes those who corrupt. Ah. But why take it out on this boy? What did you expect? His father stole money, didn't he? Don't forget, Lilla. When George died, a lot of his workers on the estate were never paid off. Some of them haven't even been able to find a job since. But Paul has nothing to do with all that. He doesn't even know what's been going on. And who do we have to blame for that? We've kept that boy without information for years. If only we'd had the guts to warn him about the dangers of coming back here to this country, all of this could have been avoided. Let me remind you, Harry Wilson. All of us had a reason for not wanting that boy to come back. All of us. Except the person who sent those letters. What you have to decide now is what you intend to do to protect the boy. Protect? Why should we protect him? It's your own grandson's life that's in danger, Mr. De Vries. What do you suggest, Malcolm? Get Paul out of Colombo as soon as possible. Send him off on a sightseeing tour. Is there any place on the island you can hide from witchcraft? I suppose you could always spend a few days with Uncle Reggie up at New Aurelia. No, 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 no. The mountain air is too cold at this time of the year. What Paul needs is a sun. Of course, there is always Yala. Yala? The game reserve. Yes, that's not a bad idea. <laughs> the only things you worry about there are the animals and the tourists. Why don't you all go with Paul? Take Joanna and Tony as well. The young company would do him good. There's safety in numbers. It's not a bad idea. Father, would you mind if we left you for a few days? Mind? Who am I to put my own grandson's life in jeopardy? I'll speak to Paul when he gets back from the cricket match with Tony. Good shot, man! Take four! Four! Good afternoon, Mr. Garawadna. Tony, man, what a surprise. Haven't seen you at the club for a good long time. Oh, Mr. Garawadna, I'd like you to meet my cousin, Paul. He's ah. just over for a visit from England. Uh, Paul, this is Mr. Garawadna, chairman of the sports club. How do you do, sir? What do you do? Come back to see how the natives live. Is that it, man, eh? <laughs> oh, oh, quite a few changes since you were last here, young man. Oh, yes, quite a few. Well played, man. Take two there. Two. So, you're George de Vries's son, are you? A fine fellow. One of the best opening bats we ever had in this club. What about you, man? I beg your pardon? Well, you do play cricket, don't you? Oh, no. Uh, as a matter of fact, I don't. I much prefer to go to the theatre or settle down to a good book. Really, man? Uh, Tony tells me you're a solicitor, Mr. Garraway. Oh, yes, man. Yes, yes. That is very correct, man. Yes. And you wrote to me in England two years ago, telling me my father had died. Yes, Paul, yes. A sad business. Uh, forgive my asking, sir, but why did you never answer any of my letters? Ah, well, Paul, you... You must understand the Sillalese legal mind. Here we believe in never writing a letter until it becomes totally unnecessary to write it anymore. In that way, we never complicate matters. <laughs> Better that way, eh? is it not, Manny? <laughs> Did you know my father well, sir? Oh, very well. We used to play golf together. I couldn't even beat him at that. I was... Uh... I was very handicapped. <laughs> How did he die, uh, sir? You had all the information in the letter, didn't no, you? No, not all. Too much of the hard stuff, if you ask me. My father drank a lot. Your family must have told you. Tony? Uncle George's name is never mentioned at Burley. Grandfather's orders. I never knew that. I'm sorry. Well played, Cossie! Well played, man! Uh, Mr. Garawadna, there are things I need to know about my father, things that perhaps only you can tell me. I'd appreciate to talk with you sometime. I, I am a very busy man, Paul. I spend many tiring hours at the Colombo Magistrates Court. You do understand, I'm sure. Yes, of course. Of course. Uh, and uh, how, how, how long are you going to stay in Salon, Paul? Oh, I have a few more weeks. I must say I envy you going back to England. Not that I'm dissatisfied with my own country, you understand, Paul. You may not be, but I am. One day we'll all be made to discover the truth about ourselves, whether we like it or not. That's enough now. You're in quite enough trouble as it is. I'll wait downstairs in the car for you, Paul. Most awfully sorry about that. That Tony's such a mixed-up chap. But what has he done? If only he'd concentrate on playing a good game of cricket, he'd have a much better time of it. 
I always say a man who plays cricket never gets drowned in deep waters, eh? <laughs> oh, good joke, man. Well done. Well done. Stop looking so glum, Paul. You'd think we were taking you to a funeral instead of a weekend at the game reserve. You love Yala. It's so full of interesting wildlife. Oh, I'm sorry, Aunt Lilla. I really am looking forward to the weekend, except there's so much for me to do in Colombo. Sit back and enjoy the ride, Paul. This is one of the best coast roads in the whole of Ceylon. We'd enjoy it more if we didn't have to travel in this terrible old jeep. The dust is not good for my chest. <laughs> Oh, I must say, I've never seen so many white sandy beaches in all my life. They must stretch for miles. They do, and further. Mm, you can certainly see why they call Ceylon Paradise Island. Paradise or not, if we don't soon reach Amblangoda for lunch, I shall faint. The heat, it is killing me. Paul? Paul, what are you out in the sun for? Don't you know this is the hottest part of the day? I was just looking at these little fellows in the rock pool. Oh, the rock crabs. Mm. You'll see them all the way along the beach here at Amblangoda. Just don't put your finger in the water. They'll give you a sharp nip. I won't. <laughs> oh, it is a beautiful spot, isn't it? Miles and miles of sandy beaches and wide blue sea. I remember Grandfather taking me out on one of those catamarans. With a whole crowd of fishermen. Hey, that's right. I remember too. It was when the whole family came down here on holiday. Not the whole family, Joanna. My father wasn't with us. He never came. It was always me and Grandfather. Odd, isn't it? A father and son who never went anywhere together, not even on holiday. You've been writing a postcard. Hmm? Oh, to Mrs. Jysinger, I promised. It just shows how English you've become. Why? Sitting on the beach, sun blazing down on you, writing a postcard. <laughs> oh, how extraordinary. No, what? Your handwriting. It's very good handwriting. It's exactly the same as your father's. Really? You recognize my father's handwriting, do you, Joan? Well, of course I do, silly. Look at the way you dot your eyes, and here, the letter J. It's almost identical to the... Yes, Joan? It's identical to the way... the same style as the rest of the family. Is it? Is that all you mean, Joanna? Come on. There's Mummy and Daddy waiting for us. If we're going to reach Allah before sunset, we'll have to get a move on. Why are we stopping? There's a Buddhist funeral procession coming towards us. Oh, where? Oh, keep your head inside the car, Paul. It's considered disrespectful to stare at the mourners as they pass. Oh, everyone seems to be dressed in white. In the Buddhist religion, white is the color of death, not black. Where are they carrying the body to? Cremation. The whole village follow the corpse to a huge bonfire. Then the mourners each throw a lighted torch, a kind of symbolic farewell. I find the whole thing quite distasteful. Oh, I think it's rather dignified. Keep your voices down. The procession is coming alongside. You! Hey, come back! Come back! Oh. What are you doing, man? Get back in the car! Hold him, Joanne! It's him, the man from the bungalow. Didn't you see him? He stared in at me. Oh, keep that door closed, Paul. Do you want to get us lit? But we can't let him get away. He's disappearing into the crowd. Come back here. Oh, the crowd. Look at the crowd. Yeah. They're turning back on us. Oh. Get back into the car, I said. Don't let him get away. Daddy, get us out of here, Harry. For God's sake, get us out of here. You could have got us killed, Paul. Oh, I'm sorry, Aunt Lilla. But that man came to the side of the jeep and stared in at me. But Paul, how can you be certain it was the same man you saw at Palpitio? I'd know that face anywhere. Forget it now, Paul. We're on holiday, man. Oh, why hasn't Tony arrived yet? You were supposed to have been here before us. <laughs> if I know anything about Tony, he's gone off bird hunting. <laughs> the two-legged variety. <laughs> oh, somebody give me a hand with this suitcase. It's got all the food in oh, it. Yeah. Let me help you. I don't like the idea of Tony getting here after dark. I'm sure he'll get into trouble again. Oh, do stop worrying, Mother. Tony's old enough to take care of himself. He'll be here soon. Oh, I don't understand the layout of this bungalow. Oh? Where are the bedrooms? Oh, bedroom. Oh, we have to sleep somewhere, don't we? But of course we do, out here on the terrace. It's much cooler. You mean 
We all sleep together. That's right. <laughs> they call England for missing. Oh, in separate beds, you silly. And I hope you don't snore. And what about mosquitoes? Don't worry. You won't bother them. <laughs> <laughs> now stop fooling around, Johanna, and come and give me a hand in the kitchen. Yes, Mother. We can't allow Cookie to do everything. <sighs> Nothing to be nervous of, Paul. You'll soon get used to the jungle. It's got an atmosphere all its own. <laughs> it's about the only place I really feel secure in these days. <laughs> Now, what in blithering hell have they done with all the oil lamps? It's getting dark out here. Tony won't be able to find us. Uh, Harry, I, I know it's none of my business, but what trouble has Tony been in? What do you mean? Well, when we were at the sports club the other day, I sent some kind of an atmosphere between Tony and Mr. Gutterworth. Ah, here they are, the blighters. Give me a hand with these lamps, Paul, oh, yes. or Lilla will have the screaming hab <laughs> Right. Freddie Garawadne, yes, yeah, yes, that's a real character, isn't it? Yes, but what about him and Tony? Has there been trouble? Well, Garawadne has defended Tony in court a couple of times. Huh? On what charges? Oh, the usual old political rubbish. Tony's a good boy at heart. But he thinks that because God made the world in seven days, he can remake it in 24 hours. Now, matches. And Garawadne was my father's solicitor. How do you know that? Cookie's preparing us a special curry and rice. I just hope there are no crocodiles about tonight. Crocodiles? <laughs> <laughs> Paul, if you believe everything your cousin tells you, you'll be a nervous wreck by the morning. <laughs> Paul, Paul, wake up. Uh, who is it? It's me, Tony. Tony? Where have you been? What time is it? Shh, keep your voice down. I don't want to wake up the others. Huh? Just get up quietly, go into the bathroom, and fetch me some antiseptic and a bandage from the first aid cabin. Are you hurt? Just do as I say. And meet me at the back of the bungalow on the other side of the fence by the river. Tony, it's dangerous to wander outside the fence after dark. Do as I say, will you? Shh. Hold the torch still, Tony. I can't see. Uh, your arm, it's bleeding. What have you been up to? It's none of your business. I'll just get the bandage on. Do you think I can't recognize a knife wound when I see one? What happened? I got in the way of a man who was hunting. There's a deep gash here. You should go to a hospital. Stop fussing, will you? It's only a graze. Now, are you going to help me or do I have to do... <gasps> and what are you going to say to your mother and father when they see you like this in the morning? Hmm? I had an accident. I fell. You were supposed to have arrived here ahead of us, Tony. Are you in trouble again? You're the one that's in trouble, not me. If we don't get out of this country soon, it'll be too late. What are you talking about? Soon after you left for Yala this morning, a letter arrived. It was addressed to you, and I opened it. You opened a letter addressed Shh. to me? Shh. Do you want to wake up the whole jungle? Tony, you have no right. I'm not the only one who recognizes your father's handwriting. My father? In the letter, he said he wanted to meet you tonight at the Dagobah near here. But I don't believe in ghosts, and that's why I decided to keep your appointment for you. You went in my place, Tony. You're a fool. That Dagobah's a place of dark shadows, even in daylight. At, at night, it's pitch black. Nobody would have recognized me. What happened? Well, after I'd waited there about an hour, I was sure the whole thing was a hoax. But as soon as I started to leave, someone came at me with a knife. And before I had the chance to fight back, he'd gone. Mm. It wasn't you they were after, it was me. Do you realize that, Tony? Someone wanted to kill me. No, that would have been too easy. It wasn't your life they were after. It was your blood. My blood? Part of the demon worship ceremony involves mixing the blood of an intended victim with that of a tarantula spider. Don't you understand, Paul? You are the victim. Their revenge. Witchcraft is still a fact of life in many villages all over the island. You saw for yourself that man at the Buddhist funeral today. You were there in that village? I know these people, Paul. They'll eat away at your mind until you won't be able to think straight anymore. Only the family knew I was coming to Yara. Any one of you could have written those letters. What are you talking Any about? Any one of you could easily have copied my father's handwriting, even Joanna. Joanna? Shh, get down. What is it? I don't know. It, it could be a leopard. They come down to the river to hunt deer. There it is again. That sound again. What, sir? Can't you hear it? It's going through my head. It's getting louder. Paul, keep down. Tony, I can't bear it. Paul, the keep sound. still. Whatever you do, don't move. Hey, do you see? In the bushes over there. It's a tusk. 
Oscar Elephant. Had he seen us? He's going to charge! I can't bear the sound! Oh, look out! <laughs> I don't feel like it. Oh, what's the matter? I'm a bit tired, that's all. Oh, I'm not surprised after what happened last night. What thing to do? That Tusker elephant could have killed you and Tony. What on earth were the two of you doing out there in the jungle in the middle of the night? I told you. It was stifling hot in the bungalow. I went out to get some fresh air just as Tony was coming home. Yes, Paul, and in any case, I don't see that it's any of your business. No, Paul, of course. I'll see you back at the bungalow. Uh, Joanna. I'm sorry. It's just these headaches I seem to be getting. I keep hearing this strange sound. Well, why don't you let Daddy give you a tonic or something? After all, he is a doctor. It's not a doctor I need, Joan. Then what do you need? I... I just don't know I'm so confused. Everything seems to be crowding in on me. That Buddhist funeral yesterday and then last night. Oh, come on, Paul. Here you have a beautiful beach and nobody here but us. And you have a face as long as a Talagoya. A what? An iguana, of course. A giant lizard. We're going to hunt for them this afternoon. Huh? They're delicious to eat. Yeah. Come on now. I'll race you into the water. Wait, wait for me. Wait for me. <laughs> oh, so wrong. Well, what did you expect? This is not the muddy old English channel, you know. So, you want a ducking, do you? Oh, no! Come on, keep away from me! <laughs> oh, oh. oh they're gigantic. They're marvellous at surfing. You know, the last time Tony and I came here, we... Paul, what is it? What are you looking at? Over there. Can't you see him? He's over there by the fishing boats. Who? I can't see anyone. Paul! Come back! What are you doing, Paul? What's wrong? He's gone. Who's gone? The man who's been following me. He was standing here by the fishing boat. Oh, are you sure? Do you think I'm going mad or something? I saw him with my own eyes. He was watching me. He must be here somewhere. But it's impossible, Paul. A man just can't disappear into thin air like that, especially on a wide stretch of beach like... What's the matter? What are you looking at? Here, in the sand. Hmm? Somebody's drawn something. A, mm. a fish. It looks like a fish. Cut in half in two separate pieces. Yes, it could be. Let's get away from here. What does the drawing mean, Joanna? I want to know. Uh, well, it's a sign of witchcraft. Yes. The demon worshippers use it in some of their ceremonies. So I'm not mad he was here. Please, Paul, let's go back to the Joanna, bungalow. Joanna, what's the significance of a fish torn into two sections? It relates to horoscopes. A broken birth sign is the sign of death. Pisces the fish. I was born under that sign. Oh, no. Oh, Paul, where are you going? To find this man. Somebody's got to start telling me the truth sooner or later. No, stay out of this, I beg you. These people are fanatics. They'll do you nothing but harm. All right, then, Joanna, you tell me. Tell me what it is my family are trying to hide from me. Tell me what they're so afraid of, why they've never wanted me to come back to Ceylon. Tell me the truth about my father, Joanna. Tell me. Your father was murdered, Paul. Murdered? You wanted the truth. Now you've got it. He was found hacked to death in the grounds of his own estate at Palpitia. He'd spent the night alone there. The place was deserted. Who was responsible? Your father himself was responsible. Would you explain what you mean by that? It was something that happened to your father during the last few years of his life, Paul. You see, he left this house to go and live alone at Palpitia. The servants say he spent hours on his own in the bungalow, just staring out of the window and into the garden. Oh, he was lost. He didn't know how to cope with things anymore. Everything he tried to do turned to failure. And then, of course, he got himself into difficulties. He stole money from the estate funds. Yes, I know about that. But who killed him? If you would prefer it, Grandfather, I could always ask the police. No! Your father was murdered by his old servant, Nihal. Nihal? Am I your friend too, Nihal? 
Of course you are, Master Paul. You always have been, my friend, and always will be. No one can ever separate us. No one. Always remember that. Nihal. The police searched the whole island, but he was never found. But Nihal was devoted to my father. He was kind and thoughtful. When your father had enough money to pay him... You're suggesting Nihal killed my father for money? Well, there are other reasons. The police believe they have proof that Nihal was a member of an illegal village society. Witchcraft. Pagan infidels dedicated to the glorification of the devil himself. The devil. Ancient superstitions are deeply ingrained in many parts of the island. And you cannot easily dismiss them. And you're saying my father was the victim of village witchcraft? It is possible. And now they want me. Oh, you mustn't think like that, Paul. Put such things out of your head. My head? Aunt Lilla, my head is bursting with all the pressures that have been put upon it. In London, I receive letters from a father who died two years ago. I come to Ceylon. And from the first moment I get off the aircraft, I'm pursued by a strange man who seems determined to be with me wherever I go. I'm given a dead tarantula whose blood is supposed to be mixed with my own. My birth sign's torn apart. A tree falls down onto me without warning. I'm a hunted man. And still, my own family treat me as though I'm a stranger. Is the nightmare ever going to end? I'd like to see where my father is buried. I want to visit his grave. That isn't possible. Why not? Your father's remains were not interred. Not the day after they found his body, George was taken to a village nearby and cremated. Cremated? My father? He was thrown on the bonfire, exactly as he wished. But my father was a Catholic, like me, like all of us. Your father was cremated according to the rites of his religion. What? But during the last year of his life, your father became a convert to Buddhism. Buddhism? There's a small temple here in Colombo. Your father used to go there. Go and see the priest. His name is Animali. He knew your father. What are the children doing? They are offering frangipani flowers to the altar of our Lord Buddha. They are a symbol of peace. Oh. Forgive me, sir. I was told to come to this temple to ask for the priest Animali. Yes. Uh, who is looking for him? My name is De Vries. I'm a visitor from England. De Vries. There is a family of that name living in Colombo, of Dutch origin, I think. Yes, they're my father's family. I I'm staying with them. Your father? So you are Paul. You know me. Oh, yes, I know you. I have known you a long time, my son. I am Animale, the priest of this temple. Uh, come with me. Come in, please. I must close the door. What is this place, Animale? It's so dark, I can't see anything. It is the shrine of our Lord Buddha. One moment, I shall light a candle. So quiet in here. And a wonderful smell of flowers and incense. There. It's magnificent. I've never seen such a gigantic statue in all my life. It, it's remarkable. You are standing before the figure of our Lord Buddha. Many have come to see him in this shrine. But they look only with the eyes, not the heart. But why is the Buddha lying on his side, Animali, and his head resting on one hand? One day, Lord Buddha was tired, and in the manner of a lion, he lay down to rest and died. Here, take the candle. There's nothing to fear. Now, hold it high above your head so that the light will fall upon the eternal face. Sapphire eyes of the great and holy one. So blue and clear. Look closely at the Lord Buddha's eyes, Paul. Look and you will see the truth.
see you again, Paul. It's been a long time since you and I were together. Is Grandfather with you? No, son. Why not? He doesn't like traveling very much these days. It's a long way from Ceylon to England, you know. Oh. Anyway, I thought it would be rather nice if we were alone together. I, I brought you a present. Here. Thank you. Aren't you going to open it? A book. It's all about the game reserve at Yala. You remember Yala, don't you? You used to go there for your holidays. Yes, I remember. Grandfather took me. There are lots of colored photographs in the book. I hope you like it, Paul. Yes, thank you. Your teachers tell me you're doing very well at your studies. They say if I were to take you back home to Ceylon now, it would spoil your education. Oh. But don't worry. One of these days, I'll come over and take you back for a holiday. Would you like that? Yes. Thank you. Paul, why don't you call me Daddy? I don't think of you as my father. Father? Father? I never gave him a chance, Animali. When my father came to see me at the school that day, I wouldn't even listen to him. Could I have been so cruel? You were only a child, my son. How could you have known that forgiveness was needed? When I came into the shrine, I felt as though my very soul were under attack. But looking up there into the Buddha's eyes tells me that they're made of something more than sapphire stones. They tell me that nightmares are an illusion, that even the spider's web can be dissolved. Witchcraft is merely a disease of the mind. Demon worship has power only over the mind that is ignorant, nothing more. Demon worship? Then you know what happened to my father? When your father received enlightenment from the Lord Buddha, he found the peace he was looking for. He learned how to live again, how to be something more than just material man. But there were other forces waiting to disrupt that peace, forces of corruption and evil. He returned to the estate at Palpitia and picked up the threads of his life again. He began to work with a new confidence and determination. For the first time in his life, he had faith. He never lost it. Animali, who killed my father? Could it have been Niho? Have you visited the holy city of Polonarua? No. Then you should go. It is worth a visit. Go to see Nihal's family who live in a small village near there. They are a poor country people, but you should talk with them. Remember, Paul, if you really want the truth, then you will find it but never submit to those who wish to destroy you. Seek out the demon and you will understand that his power does not exist. Never forget, my son, the eyes of the Buddha are upon you. How can we climb over a steep rock like this without even coming to hold on to it? I'm terrified of heights. Oh, monkeys! Oh, go away! You horrible thing! Give me your hand, John. I'll give you a pull up. There. Thank you. Ah, that's better. Oh. oh, I'm sorry to drag you out on this trip, Malcolm. But with Grandfather not being very well, the rest of the family just wouldn't leave him. Ah, it's no problem to me, Paul. Anyway, I know this part of the country like the back of my hand. Ah, do you see? Hmm? Over there in the distance... That's the holy city of Polonarowa. Dates back beyond the 8th century A.D. Oh, yes. I can't wait to get down there. Then why do we have to come all the way up here first? What good is it going to do to talk to Nihal's family? I don't know, Joanna. Well, we'll soon find out. This is the hut where they live. looking for the wife of Nihal. Who is looking for her? 
This gentleman is from England. He is Paul, the son of Mr. De Vries. Oh, oh Master Paul. You oh. know me. Oh. Then I am happy to meet Nihal's wife. No, he is not here. Why do you come? Master wishes to ask you questions. Will you speak with him? Why? Uh, Malcolm, let me talk to the old lady on my own, please. Mm, very well. But be careful, Paul. Come on, Joanna. Yes, of course. Old woman, when I was a child, Nihal was good to me. He was my friend. He was the friend of my father also. The police say Nihal killed my father. My Nihal did not kill good man. He tried only to save your father, not kill. Save? Once foolish young people break into bungalow, guns and knives, oh, no, no, much danger. You mean the insurgents, the rebels? Nihal protect your father, always protect, hide him until safe. I understand. And then, with snake, take Pulunga near coconut tree, try to kill your father. Nihal, stop snake, kill snake, or the priest very angry. Angry? Buddhist religion say all living things are sacred. So Nihal defied his religion to save my father's life. Listen to me. I want to help Nihal. He is my friend. Tell me where I can find oh, him. Oh, please, you're what not asking me. Oh, tell me, what's wrong? No. You, you must go to the Galputa. Huh? The old king's stone at Polonarua. There you will find out the truth. Only the truth. Paul, is everything all right? Uh, just a minute, please, Malcolm. The Galputa. The Book of Stone at Polonaroa. Go there at dusk and go alone. That is all. What's that? Is anyone there? Oi, oi, oi. Bullfrog. You're about the only comfort I'm going to get here tonight. Full moon. How many full moons has Polinaro seen? Your kings and their palaces, their temples. The start of a new civilization, new hopes for the future. It's all here. I can see it all around me. <gasps> There's someone there. I'm not afraid. How much longer to wait? What am I waiting for? Galpata, the Book of Stone. I wish I knew what you really meant. It's light enough to read you, and yet... There it is again. I am not afraid. The moon. It's disappearing behind the clouds. Don't go. It's dark. I can't see. Why is it so quiet? No flying foxes. And where are the jackals? Is everything dead out there? Who's there? I can't see you. It's too dark. Where are you? I can't see you. I can't see you. Ah! There's something on top of the stone. It's crawling towards me. I can't move my hand. The tarantula. I can't move my hand. Oh, that voice. Who's there? Paul. Paul, my dear boy, are you all right? What is it, Paul? What happened? They were here. They were all around me. Who was here, Paul? Who? The tarantula. It was crawling towards me on the stone book. Oh, no. Joanna. Give me the torch. You shouldn't have come here, Paul. I begged you not to. There's nothing here. Nothing at all. It was here, I tell you. Do you think I'm mad? Paul, you've got to stop this. We've got to go back to Colombo at once. No. Paul, listen to me. We've got to go back home as soon as possible. Grandfather's asking for you. You've got to see him. He's had a heart attack. 
He's dying, Paul. Grandfather is dying. Paul. Paul. I want to see my grandson. Go to him, Paul. And only a few minutes now. Grandfather? Paul. You came home to search for the truth. I refused to help you. I also came to see you, Grandfather, and all the family. Your father loved you, Paul, as I loved him. But the two of us could never understand each other. Always there was a shadow between us. Grandfather, please. Your father was frightened that the same shadow would fall between you and him. <laughs> we used to play cards together, didn't we, Paul? And I did cheat, but I won. I couldn't bear to lose. Don't tie yourself. Paul, you feel guilty about your father, don't you? Well, I feel guilty too. That makes us equal, doesn't it? Equal. <laughs> I am more guilty than you. I, I didn't want your father to succeed where I had failed. What are you saying, Grandfather? I was the shadow between you and your father, Paul. That's why we played cards together. Why we went on holiday. It was I who wanted you to be educated in England. You? Listen to me, Paul. Hmm? I never believed your father took that money. There was someone else. Ask her. Rawadna, he'll tell you. Garawadna? I never wanted you to come back to Ceylon. I knew they wanted you. Who wanted me, Grandfather? Who? <laughs> Harry, Aunt Lilla. <laughs> Help me to sit up. I will not die lying down. Take hold of his arm, Paul. Yes, sir. <laughs> it's... Getting dark outside. They're lighting the candles in Colombo. No, Grandfather, the sun shining. City is turning gold. Give me your hand, Paul. I'm here, Grandfather. Foxes are gathering. I, I must join them in their flight. Find the truth, Paul. Give the de Vries family back their name. <laughs> Father? It's too late. He is dead. Yes, poor man. I was working for your grandfather. You see, he never believed your father was involved stealing those funds. And yet he wouldn't allow mention of my father's name in his house. Oh, oh what a man, man. He took his Christianity too seriously, that's all. Christ, Buddha, it's the same thing in the end, isn't it? Mr. Garawadna, is it possible that the reason for my father's death was that he found out who did steal that money? It's more than possible. In which case, that same person could have written those letters to me. He's now trying to use witchcraft on you. What use can I be to them? Or my death? It is puzzling, man. Unless, of course, the person believes you have some information that could be incriminating. I only wish I had. What exactly does the demon ritual involve? The beating of the devil drums induces a state of trance in the worshippers. Hmm? Whilst in this trance, they can be commanded to do anything. Even hack a man to death? Yes. They also have the power to assault the victim's mind, wherever he may be. Look, forget about all this now, Paul Man. In a couple of weeks from now, you'll be home in England, away from demon worship, away from the past. No, I, I could never go back to England until I know the demon won't be able to reach me anymore. What are you going to do, man? Do? I'm going to meet the demon on his own ground. At Palpitia. All right, Paul. This is it. Palpitia. But let me say, I think you're making a big mistake. This is my fight, Tony. It's me they want, and I'm ready for them. But you do not know what you're up against, Paul. People have been known to go stark, staring mad after a night of demon ritual. You're forgetting one thing. To gain power over me, they need my blood. When these people attacked you at Yala, they thought they had it. No, it's not my death they want. Then what do they want? That's what I'm here to find out. 
You're sure you did what I asked? Yes, practically the whole of Colombo knows you're spending the night alone here. You're a sitting target, Paul. You know that, don't you? Good. So you'd better get out of here while you can. Oh, and Tony, if you really want to help me, don't hang around anywhere near this place. At this moment, we're being watched. Don't ruin things for me. Good luck, Paul. You're going to need it. past, the present, and maybe the future. Your teachers say if I were to take you back to Ceylon now, it would spoil your education. I don't think of you as a father. Find the truth, Paul. Give the de Vries family back their name. I don't want to go to England. I don't want to leave Palpitia. Master Paul. Am I your friend too, Niha? Of course you are, Master Paul. You always have been my friend and always will be. No one can ever separate us. No one. Always remember that. Seek out the demon, and you will understand that his power does not exist. Never forget, my son, the eyes of the Buddha are upon you. Who's there? I know you're out there. I'm alone. I'm waiting for you. Lighter. Where's it coming from? Outside on the lawn. Candles. There are shadows everywhere. If only I could see. They're coming out of the jungle. Cases. Masks. Devil masks. That drum. <laughs> you mustn't lose control. Keep control. 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 exist. It does not exist. Oh. Who's there? I can't see you in the shadows. Scared off. Who are you? How come? You? Yes. But you were my father's friend. He trusted you. Yes. You stole that money from the estate, didn't you? And he found out. I offered to share it with him. But he became so righteous he couldn't allow himself to take it. Yes. <laughs> he even asked me to pay it back. Did that justify killing him? Oh, yes. It was more difficult to pay back than he realized. But why all this? Devil worship, witchcraft. Your father was so naive. He never realized that witchcraft had been practiced by his workers here for years. When he found out, he dismissed all those involved. You see, Paul, he gave them a motive for hating him. I only had to use that motive. Has life treated you so badly that you could kill your best friend for money? Ah, there speaks a true de Vries. Your family only had to inherit money. I had to work for my... Did you write those letters? Those forgeries? Were you the one who brought me out from England and tried to make me believe my father was still alive? Naturally. Now, that's what interests me, Malcolm. You could have had me killed the moment I arrived in Ceylon, and yet you chose not to. Why? There must be a reason. Yes. What are we waiting for? Who are we waiting for? I'm not waiting for anything. 
You chose to find out about me. Now I cannot allow you to live. But if you kill me, all this will have been a waste. Yes, but you've left me no choice. Luxios! No! Yield, Paul, yield! No! Your power does not exist! It does not exist! Yield! No! Never! After him! After him! Keep control. 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 Those drums! Where am I? Which way can I go? Which way? I can't move. Those drums! Oh! Power does not exist. Control. 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 Paul, there is nowhere for you to go. Your power does not exist. The eyes, the Buddha's eyes, I can see them. Give me the knife. Stop the drums. Get another tanya. eyes of the Lord Buddha were watching over you, my son. Always remember, Paul, there is no force greater than that of one's own faith. Yes. I saw the Buddha's eyes quite distinctly. The sapphire penetrated the darkness. But there was something else, Anamani. Just before I lost consciousness, the jungle was filled with a strange sound. In the moonlight, I could see the saffron robe of a priest. I'm so grateful that you were there. Oh, I was not there, my son. But I couldn't have imagined it. Animali? Where are you? Paul. Who's that? There's nothing to be afraid of, Paul. I, I can't see you in the dark. Hold the candle higher. Yes. How strange, I knew. All the time, I knew. They said we were alike, you and me. I suppose we are, a bit. <laughs> You're taller than me, you rascal. <laughs> isn't it silly? I can't think of what to say. It is difficult, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> what should we do about it? I think we'd better go for a walk. I remember once, we did walk together along this beach at Mount Lavinia. I think it must have been the first time I ever saw the sea. I was terrified, and you laughed. <laughs> <laughs> Father, it was you at Polinarawa, wasn't it? That night when I was waiting by the Book of Stone? Yes, Paul, I was there. From the moment you arrived in Ceylon, I knew everything you did. And there was a monk in the Petar Market in Colombo. Ah. Malcolm never believed I was dead. As long as I was alive, I was a threat to him. You, Paul, were the bait to bring me out into the open. But they found your body at Palpitia. No. It was Nihal's body they found. Nihal? Nihal gave me the chance to escape. He used himself as a decoy. In the dark, they hacked him to death. The following morning, his family took him to the village and he was cremated as if he were me. Because of my dear friend, Nihal, I was given the chance to live again. His wife, that old woman, she knew you were alive. That's why she sent me to the stone book at Polinarawa. Yes, but there were others there before me. 
The ironic thing is that I told Malcolm I would never tell anyone what he had done. All I asked was that he paid the money back into the estate in his own time. What will happen to him now? Malcolm is dead. Dead? His body was found in the jungle this morning. He had taken his own life. Perhaps it's best that way. For him, perhaps. Last night, it was you I saw in the jungle. That strange chant. Om Mani Padme Om. Hmm. We call it a mantra, Paul. The most sacred and powerful words, words that we in the Buddhist faith believe can contact directly the benevolent force that we all call God. It's the only thing that can break the trance of the so-called demon worshippers. I, I don't mean to sound disrespectful, Father, but it is a bit strange to see you like this. <laughs> Saffron robes and shaved head. <laughs> It's something one gets used to. Will you spend the rest of your life locked up in a monastery? Oh, you make it sound like a prison. We are free. Free to go where we like. Now that Grandfather's dead, will you visit Burley? Of course, Paul. Now that I'm free from the past, I shall go back and see Lilla and the rest of the family from time to time. You know that Grandfather loved you. Yes. But as we both know, it's not always easy to communicate our feelings. If only he had understood that both our gods are the same god. We just meet them in different ways, that's all. Father, I'm going to come back here to live. No, you don't belong here. But of course I do, Father. I was born here. My roots are here. I want to find myself. You have found yourself. We both have. We know each other now. But I love this beautiful country. <laughs> Well, I am glad you've realized Sri Lanka is something more than a land of demon worship. <laughs> Do you know something? When I was a child on board that aircraft going to England, I remember looking down at this island spread out like, like a large emerald. It was my home I was leaving. And I vowed that one day I would come back. And you have come back and will come back again and I shall be here to see you. Yes. <laughs> Father... In Eyes of the Buddha by Victor Pemberton, the part of Paul was played by David Spencer and that of Malcolm Warwick by John Westbrook. Mrs. Jaya Singer and the old lady were played by Barbara Mitchell, Joanna Elizabeth Proud, Aunt Lilla Hilda Kreisman, Annie Marley John Ruddock, George DePriest Nigel Graham, Tony Andrew Rivers, Grandfather DePriest Rolf the Fever, Mr. Garawadna William Eagle, Nihal Ronald Herdman, and Uncle Harry William Fox. The play was produced by John Tideman. <laughs> <laughs>